Because he's the way maker. Way maker. I know we got our God a witness up in here. Yes. 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 Will he keep his promise? Yes. yes. <laughs> oh. Will he work some miracles? Have he worked some miracles in your life? Yes. Because he's going to work some yes. miracles in my life. Mm. He's a part of his life. That's my darkest hour. That's, that's my God. That's who he is. Amen. Because it's a personal. Yes. Amen. Yes. I can't speak about what he did for me, but boy, I can. And it's a blessing to be here today. We're going to get into the meat of the word. I'm going to read the scripture. Get your word here, read, and you hear it, and then we're going to get, sit right down. Amen. It's coming from the book of Shane. John. The eighth chapter. Amen. Amen. 31 through 36. And amen. And then said Jesus, turn him on to him. You don't lie. I want to thank everyone who is joining with us online. And mm -hmm. to be YouTube or our website. We thank you for allowing us to come to your home. Uh, it's going to be verse 31 reads, Then Jesus sent Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Set you free, make you free. I'm going to start right there. Father God, thank you in the name of Jesus for this word. Thank you for this hour. And we pray, oh God, that you let your spirit have his way in this place. Lord. Minister to the hearts and minds of these people. Lord. Open their ears that they'll hear what you have to say today, Lord, that they'll be edified and you'll be glorified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Last week, uh, we started our series Three keys to spiritual victory. And we know that the first key was what? Stop believing lies. Amen. So the second key today is going to be what Jesus just told those who would like to be his disciples. I don't even know the truth, but you got to stay in the Word. Yes. He said, you continue in my Word. He said, I hear what you're saying. I know what you're saying. He said, but if you continue in my Word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. You will get to know me, because I am the truth. Amen. And that truth will set you free. Okay? You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Three keys to spiritual victory. The second key is we need to we need to say in the word. We you know we are man is very, very complacent. You know what that? Have you ever noticed if you stop doing something? For too long, how hard it is to get back to it. Mm -hmm. Even if y'all, I was off work for three and a half months, and when I went back to work, I didn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to be in my laser bar. <laughs> I couldn't even get back in the groove. I, 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 would, I sit in my office for the first week or so, trying to figure out, just trying to get back in the groove of that. It took a good month for me to get back, you know, for my feet to stop hurting. Because I hadn't been walking so much no more. Everything changed. Because I stopped doing it. Same thing with the gym. I'm back in there now. But boy, it takes a conscious effort. It takes prayer and fasting. I was, oh Lord, I kept saying I'm going. My wife tried to help me. She tried to help me. I come home Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is when I would go to the gym. And I would sit in that lazy boy. She said, Aren't you going to the gym? <laughs> I'll tell you, mind your own business. <laughs> Amen. But it, 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 it 
it's hard when we stop. Yep. Okay? And so when we stop, what happens? We get out of touch. We get out of shape. Everything happens. So what Jesus is saying here is to those disciples that believed on him, they said, we believe. We believe you're the son of God and all that stuff. He said, okay. He said, but if you, if you don't continue my word, you're not my disciple. Let me just make that clear right now. Okay, so you don't get confused. With that guy. So when people don't want to study the word and grow in grace and all that, Jesus himself said, if you don't do that, you are not his disciple. You're not one of his disciples. So I didn't say it, he said it. So last week we learned, when we looked at uh, chapter 13 of the book of St. Luke, about a woman who had been bound by the devil for 18 years. Jesus called it a spirit of infirmity, which lets me know that this woman, just like the woman with the issue of blood, had exhausted everything because it wasn't a physical ailment. Mm -hmm. She didn't know why she was all bent over and couldn't stand up. She just couldn't. They're saying, you know what, stand up straight. She said, I can't. Well, what's wrong with you? We didn't examine you. Ain't nothing wrong with your back. What, ain't nothing wrong with your spine. Why you can't? What do you mean you can't do it? She said, I simply cannot do it. And Jesus said she was bound by the devil. Okay? She was bent over, all bent out of shape. They could not stand up straight. She was restricted. Her movement was restricted. She was, it was impossible for her to stand up straight until she came to Jesus. And the Bible said he touched her and told her she was loose from her infirmity. Amen. Amen. And he loosed her and set her free. Yeah. There's people still in the world today bound by the devil. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about this world of people. I'm talking about people of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I told you last week you can't be possessed, but you can be oppressed yeah. by a spirit of the devil. Everything is a spirit. Spirit of anger, spirit of unforgiveness, the spirit of lust. It's all a spirit. It all comes as a spirit. Amen. So if it's not the spirit of God, guess what? It's only one of it's the spirit of the devil. Amen. Amen. We're going to either be led by the spirit of God or led by the spirit of the devil. Amen. Now the Bible doesn't give us any insight of surrounding this woman's life or how she might have gotten caught up in that situation. We don't know what happened. Maybe she was dabbling with black magic, witchcraft. We don't know. But the Bible does tell us not to uh, deal with those types of things. He tells us to stay away from demonic things. Demonic influences. Ouija boards. All these kind of things. Why? Because he knows they are real. And when you get caught up in it, you will open a door of opportunity for the enemy to come in. Amen. And he may do it physically, spiritually, or emotionally. People are emotionally bound. They've been saved, but they don't know what's wrong with them. That's what's wrong with them. They need to be free. They need to be delivered. Amen. So we do know that it all began in the beginning. Remember we talked about Genesis 3. Adam and Eve, right? When Satan lied to Eve. Ain't that right? In the garden. And Eve believed that lie. How do we know Eve believed that lie? Because Eve acted on the, what she believed. She acted on the lie. So we know she believed it. Because when the enemy told her that, you know, when you eat of the fruit, you won't surely die. He said, the Lord just know that you're going to be like a God, like him, knowing good and evil. He told a lie and the truth. Yes, they was going to know good and evil, but they were definitely going to surely die, just like God said. Amen. Mm -hmm. And because she acted on that belief, and uh, this is why we as believers today, amen, born again believers, struggle and have so many issues and we give place to the devil when we find ourselves in situations where we have to make a decision just like Eve did and we make the wrong decision. Amen. Amen. That's when you give place to the devil. Amen. Spiritual bondage. Okay. Or satanic oppression. We give him that over our life every time we decide to be disobedient to God. Think about it. That's all the enemy wants to do is get you to be disobedient to God. Yeah. 
That's his MO. That's his mode of operation. That's all he cares about. Why? Because he said you're going to praise me. Yeah. I'm going to be like the most high. I'm going to ascend uh, above the Lord on the north. He said, I'm, you're going to worship me. Right. And because he said that, we know he got kicked out of heaven. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But in Genesis 3 and 6 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Now they they've been seeing the tree, amen. Yeah. They didn't just see the tree when Satan pointed it out, did they? No. They already knew about the tree. But all of a sudden now she sees something in the tree that is good for food. Because she's listening to the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. Mm. You know what that is? That's the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eye and the pride of life. We still deal with it every day. It'll never be any other sin. He's going to always come at us with one of those three or all three of them at the same time. Amen. Because he wants us. He did the same thing to Jesus. When he tempted him in the wilderness. He said, turn those stones to bread. I know you're hungry. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See what I'm saying? He couldn't fool Jesus like he did Eve. Amen. But he wanted him to do what? That's the lust of the flesh. He wanted him to eat. He said, you got the power. If you be the son of God, just change those stones in the bread. Yeah. Jesus said, if the minute Jesus would have did anything he told him to do, yeah. that would have been the end of the hunt. Amen. It would have been all over. Amen. And he tempted him to tempt God. Go up on the high pillar. Just throw yourself off. Because yeah. the angels say, you know, the Bible said the angels don't cut you up by the wings so you can't dash your foot against the rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus told him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt mm -hmm. the Lord thy God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the last thing he told him was the first thing he wanted to do in the first place. And that's what he wants us to do. He said, just bow down and worship. He said, just, if you bow down to me. The Bible says he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. He said, if you just bow down to me. He said, I'll give you all of this. Jesus told him, you can't serve no one but who? God only. No other can we serve. Amen. So the Bible said that he had to leave him. Say, but he departed for a while. Because he's not going to stay gone. One thing Satan do that we don't, he is consistent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's very good at what he does, and he's consistent. He ain't never going to stop. He don't sleep or slumber either. Amen. So as we see the book of Genesis, and we see what happened to Eve, and we know the story she, you know, when we finished reading it, and she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave it also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. That's a whole nother sermon. That's a whole nother sermon. I can't get into that right now. <laughs> but that one act that Eve committed, she gave access to the devil. She opened the door and the entire human race was separated from God, our life source. Amen. And bound by the devil from that yeah. point on. Everybody born after Adam is born in sin. Yeah. We're not sinners because of what we do. We're sinners because of who we are. Yeah. We were born in sin. Amen. Just because of that one disobedient act she committed. Amen. Now Jesus told, uh, God told him, he said, you shall surely die. So we know that they didn't die physically, yeah. but they died spiritually. Yeah. Because spiritual death is separation from God. So we know that he put that angel with that wielding sword in front of the tree of life and kicked him out of the garden and said, you got to go. You're on your own now. And we know that soon after that, one brother murdered the other one. Why? Because sin has come into the world. And that's what's happening to us today, people of God. We don't want to give place to the devil. And we do it many times unknowingly because we want to make a decision that we don't want God to have no part of. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
But that one act of disobedience. So what is spiritual oppression? Because we know what possession is. That means uh, demons or many demons, legion, whatever, will come in and actually take over uh, your body. Take over residence in your body. Amen. But they can't do that because of the spirit of God is in them. Right. Light and dark can't dwell in the same place. Right. They be trying, but they can't. But they can cause some problems. Right. Amen. So what is it? It says oppression is malicious or unjust treatment or exercise of power, often under the guise of demonic influence. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. We see it a lot today in our children because they're having a crisis. So you see some of the things they're doing that mm -hmm. seem like they have no soul, no spirit, no conscience. Mm -hmm. That's because demons don't have no conscience. Oh, yeah. Amen. If they're being led by the devil, they're not going to have no conscience. I'm reminded how at one time they were, they were bored, so they were walking around hitting elderly people to see if they could knock them out with one punch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't have no conscience doing that. Mm -hmm. right. That's somebody's mama, grandmama, great-grandmama, daughter. Right. And if you hit their mama, they probably try to kill you. Mm -hmm. But they was doing it. Mm -hmm. Amen. It says spiritual oppression may be over or covered depending on its practice. That means the enemy will oppress you over, I mean, he'll, he'll do it in the open. You'll know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Covert, I mean, it'll be in secret. You won't know what's going on. Amen. That's when they take your, your, your kid to the, to the priest and say something wrong with him. Like the man brought his son to Jesus. He said, look, he's throwing himself in the fire, in the water. He's doing all kinds of things that he shouldn't be doing, trying to hurt himself, cutting himself. Jesus <laughs> Jesus had to cast a demon out of him. Amen. But the term overt means visible. Covert means it's hidden. Amen. It is to burden or restrain, subject to burdensome or harsh exercise of authority, to lie heavily upon one. People feel a heavy spirit on them. They don't know what's going on. I just don't, I just can't get going. It's a spirit of oppression, spirit of depression. All of that is of the devil. It's put down to subdue, to, to suppress. To press against. So the enemy does all these things and he's real. Yes. So what God wants us to do is remember that the battle is not between flesh and blood. We quote these scriptures, but then when the enemy comes, uh -huh. Uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. You find yourself in an argument of cussing each other out. Oh, yeah. And Satan just sitting back like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell him this. Remember the time she did that? Tell her that. He, he just, he's just manipulating the whole thing. It's instigate, and once you get done destroying your marriage, you want to blame the devil. He said, well, you can't blame me. I didn't do nothing. You did. I haven't cussed nobody out. Amen. So we have to understand and be mindful of this so when these, we have these thoughts that we're able to do what I said last week and that is to cast them down. Right. Cast down. Tear down strongholds. Cast down imagination. Amen. So when we're dealing with fear, and we're always dealing with fear because we were born in sin, I'm going to tell you why. In the spiritual realm, when we're dealing in fear, we are usually dealing with oppression of the devil and fear of death. There's not a person in there you can say what you want, but you're not you're afraid to die. Amen. Show me a hand if you're not afraid to die. We can work it out right now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now we 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 know where we need to be, and I believe when the time comes, if God put us in that position, if we're born the Spirit of God, we will be able to stand and go ahead and take the death. Amen. But nobody's just ready to die. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we have fear of death. We have fear of losing something or someone that we want to hold on to. Amen. And many times the devil, what he does is he heads you off at the pass. So he knows where God wants you to go. Amen. So what he'll do is he'll send a Tyrone, a Jerome, uh, over there to just mess you up. Amen. They're going to say everything right. They're going to do everything right. Amen. You was getting closer to Jesus, but now he's going to derail your whole spiritual walk. 
Because he done sent somebody over there and he knew exactly what to tell them to say. No. Amen. They're going to do everything right. Amen. Until they draw you so far away from God and you look up and figure out that you have been hoodwinked. Yeah. Amen. Because they're not who you thought they were. Oh, Amen. 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 Same thing with the man. He's going to send that little pretty girl up there and mess you up. Uh, dealing with one right now. You're going to follow the little girl. She's going to draw you right away from God. Amen. Amen. So we don't want to lose things that we want. Amen. And this is why. And we all been there. We, we know we all been there, right? I got a witness, right? Amen. Uh, it's not nothing new. We all been doing it. Amen. We ain't been saved a whole lot. And some of us who say not still is not in control. Right. Amen. 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 The devil's still running things. Yeah. Amen. And this is why we, we don't consult God Lord. with things that we want to do. That we done already made our mind up we're going to do. Yeah. You see all the red flags. Yeah. You see them. And when you see them, you just knock them down. You, know. yeah. you see the red flag, but... You, this is what you want to do, so you just knock them down. It don't mean nothing until it's too late. Amen. But we're not going to God with something we want to do. Amen. We're not going to ask him. We're not going to inquire with God what we need to do. Why? Because if he disagrees, we're going to do it anyway. Yeah. So what we do is we do it, and then when we find ourselves in trouble, we go to God and ask him to get us out. Yeah. We ask, oh Lord, you, you let me marry this man or you let me marry this woman. I ain't let you do that. You knew that demon wasn't of God when you met him. Amen. You knew they wasn't of God, but you wanted them. Couldn't nobody tell you. I, he, you know, I done sent everybody to tell you. You won't, you won't even listen to them. Amen. So he said, no, don't tell me. You did it. Why? Because you chose to disobey me. Okay? And do what you want to do. Just like Eve did. Satan does not want us to serve God at all. To worship God. At all. So he's going to do everything in his power to restrain us from doing so. His strategies in the world is to, number one, Get people to believe you don't exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to be dumb as a box of rocks to believe that. How are you going to believe in God and don't believe in the devil? Right. Amen. 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 His second strategy, though, mm, is he tries to scare us. Amen. Into not obeying God. Amen. In our life. Just for like some of the reasons I just gave you because it's something we want. So he'll bring some in your life that you want. And he'll say, okay, now you're going to disobey God. Mm -hmm. Right? And God's not going to be able to bless you. You're going to get in trouble. You're going to get away from God. You're going to draw away from the Lord. Amen. So we got to make sure we have our guard when we see that. When you're dealing with somebody like that. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. So listen. The struggle is always the same as it was with Eve. It's never changed. Satan don't need to change his taxes. Why? Why? Because they work. They work. <laughs> he don't need to change. It works like a charm. Every time. If it don't work today, he'll bring it back next week. Yeah. He's going to keep on coming back around. Amen. Enticing you. Trying to influence you to disobey God. Amen. Choosing to obey God's word or not. That is the key. Mm -hmm. And every time we choose to disobey God. Amen. We give place to the devil. We can either be chewed, led by our spirit, by the spirit of God, or led by our flesh, which is the devil. Ain't that what the Bible said? Galatians 5 and 16. Say, uh, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The only way we're not going to be led by the devil is if we're led by the spirit of God. Right. We are going to be led. You know, you hear people say, well, I, don't, I won't get into none of that. Oh, you in it. You, you in it. Don't think you are exempt. Or you in the middle. No, you you either led by God, Spirit of God, or you led by the Spirit of the devil. Amen. So this is what's going on. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. What that is, is Eve, Satan pointed out to Eve, her selfish mind. 
what she thinks. See, she was God conscious. So she was only thinking about what God told her. Mm -hmm. right. But once he told her, to look, at, look at the tree, look at it. Don't you want some of that fruit? God ain't going to get you. I know he said it, but he's not. He just know you're going to be like God. Mm -hmm. So she began to entertain the thought. Ain't that what get us in trouble? Yeah. Uh, you have a thought, mm -hmm. right? And what you need to do is get rid of it and move on. Okay, don't entertain it. Because the longer you entertain it, you give it a place, he got a toehold. Mm -hmm. If you keep on entertaining it, he's going to get a foothold. No. And before long, he's going to have a stronghold. He's going to have, you know, full naked choke. Real choke, and you're going to be gasping for that. I don't know what happened. But you let him get over that. Amen. Amen. So he got her to look at the lust of her mind, what she thinks in her selfish. Then he had to look at her selfish will, right? What she desired. And then he had her look at her selfish emotions. How she feels. That's what gets us. Our mind, our will, and our emotions. This is why women are more susceptible to the attack of the enemy than men. I'm just gonna tell you the truth. That's right. That's right. That's why Jesus said the woman was a weaker vessel. That's all. He's not talking about you know you any less than a man or. You're not as smart as a man. I think some women are much smarter than me. That's not what he's talking about. Amen. He's talking about your maker. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. A woman is a nurturer. So by nature, you're more emotional. Amen. So all the devil got to do is deal with your emotions. Amen. Like I say, you get Tyrone up in there. <laughs> yeah, you get to looking at Tyrone and boy. Next thing you know, you're not looking at Jesus no more. Just like Eve, she wasn't looking at Jesus no more. Because now she was in her own thinking. Amen. Amen. Um, but I just named the human soul. That's the human soul. Our mind, our will, and our emotion. Okay? Our soul needs to die. Listen. In Ezekiel 18, and what I mean by that, we need to die to self. Our, what we think, what we desire, what we feel. Because that's what gets us in trouble. And I'm here to tell you, I can care less how you think, how you feel, or what you desire. Jesus he, he said, because you need to, your desires need to be my desires. Amen. This is why the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. That's what the book of Galatians said. He said it contrary to one another. So that we can't do the things that we would for God. Because your flesh is always getting in the way. But what we have is the Spirit of God. So we have the power to control our flesh. We have the power to tell our flesh no. But in Ezekiel 18 and 20, A, says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Yes. Amen. Our soul sinned. <laughs> We got to die to self. Amen. That's our problem. But look at 1 John 2. He said, love not the world. 1 John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's the New Testament. <laughs> Same thing that got eaten. Is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now look what he said. 17. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. That's it. See, we got to change our will. We got to start feeding our spirit. And this is why instead of sitting at home watching... I don't know. Whatever it is you be watching, it takes up so much time. You, you need to be maybe Bible study. Sign this through. You know, we need to get into the Word. Pick up the Bible. Amen. 
Because we're feeding our flesh and whichever one is strongest is the one that's going to dominate. So that's why uh, 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 the best way for us to be have spiritual victory is what? We got to stay in the word. You can't stop doing it. You go, okay, you say, now nah, you don't need to do nothing. You don't need to go to church. You don't need to do nothing. Okay. You're going to find yourself right back out there doing the same thing you was doing, if not worse. Amen. And still telling people you're a child of God. I hear that so much. I, oh, Lord, that much. Oh, I know I'm saved. If you say so, tell it to Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is why we must stay in the Word, people of God. Uh, look at Hebrews 2 and 14. Because I told you, fear of death. When when we when Adam and Eve said we were separated from God, the Bible says we became spiritually dead, right? Because God is our life force. This is why we have to be born again. See, if you want to if you want to be in Christ, you have to be born again of the Spirit of God. It says for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, who are the children? That's how we are. That's right. He also himself likewise took part of the same. Jesus Christ. He came as a human being, the form of a man. Okay? That through death, death on the cross, okay, he might destroy him that had the power of death. <laughs> that is the devil. I tell people that the devil ain't never had no power of death. I, I, Man, look, listen, listen. First of all, we don't need to be talking because I know the word and you don't. <laughs> so that's a wasted conversation. You need to read the word. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Satan got control once we sin in that garden. Uh -huh. In order for us to take that control back, we have to be born of the Spirit of God. Uh -huh. And then we have to make a decision to be obedient to God's word. Yes. It's a decision we make every day. Look, and said to deliver them, look, 15, who through fear of death for all their lifetime, mm -hmm. subject to what? Bondage. This is the word of God. I'm not making it up. Right. This is a teaching moment. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's very, very important what church you go to. No, it's very, very important who's teaching you and what they are teaching you. Because if they're not teaching you the word, that's going to be detrimental to you. You can't grow if you're not being taught. Amen. You can't grow if you're not being taught. And this is what he's saying. We cannot be bathed in Christ. And that's where a lot of people are. They've said the sinner's prayer. They accepted Jesus Christ. And then they stop. And he said, you're just a baby. What does a baby know? Nothing. You know how many billions of babies they're killing physically in the world every day? Innocent babies. Satan is a baby killer. So he liked the fact that you still think like a baby. You still act like a baby. Apostle Paul said, when I, was a, when I was a child, I thought as a child. He said, I acted like a child. Right? He said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. He had to grow in the Word of God. Amen. 1 Corinthians. If we look at the, uh, the book of 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. The Apostle Paul spoke to the Corinthian church about this. Because they were still acting like babies. You know. First Corinthians 3. Amen. Verse 1. The Apostle Paul said. Okay. Let me get there. Let me get a second. You guys got on the book? I can read from And our brethren could not speak unto you. As unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. He said, you're still in your flesh. I can't speak to you about spiritual things. Because you don't, they go right over your head. You don't know nothing about it. Why? Because you haven't continued in God's word. Right? He said, even as unto babes, 
in Christ. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it. And neither yet now are you able. He said, I can't get into the deep spiritual things of God that's going to strengthen you and have to be able to know that you have power over the enemy. He don't have power over you. Why? Because you, you won't study. You're still a baby. Yeah. So when we're a baby, when we don't know something, what we do is we lay our own understanding, right? Yeah. So then we begin to come up with our own God. Right. You see what I'm saying? We begin to come up with our own standard. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, God know my heart. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. What a condemning statement that is. Because, yes, he do know your heart. That's why he, he ended up going to hell. Because he know your heart. You don't. We don't. And I'm saying, but, but we use that uh, as a disclaimer to say, well, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to heaven. Woo! Okay. Amen. That's why you got to be taught. Amen? Amen. I'm going to do my job. Amen. Amen. So last week we talked about what? Stop believing lies. You cannot stop believing a lie if you don't know the truth. Uh -huh. If I lie to you and you don't know the truth, you can't tell me I'm lying. That's right. That's right. Because you don't know. So if you don't know the truth, you left out there for anything. This is why so many religions in the world. Because people don't know the truth. So what do they do? They come up with their own religion. Yeah. We're going to take this part out and we're going to say that uh, no blacks can get to this level. Okay? Uh, and let's make it where, you know what I mean? You sit down making up a religion. God ain't said none of that stuff. But people, thousands, millions of people are believing in and walking in it. We're going to say that uh, Jesus and Satan, Lucifer, are spirit brothers. Jesus is angel. Now, you know the religions who that teach that, right? Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. And people read it, and they sit there and believe it. But they believe it a lot. Yeah, Jesus is not God. He was just a prophet. He's an angel. You know, he's a cousin of the angel Moroni. I told you what she was about. You know, he did. They come up, Jesus uh, got Mary pregnant, and they had a baby. And just all kind of unbiblical, ungodly stuff. But if you don't know the truth, you can't say to the body to believe it. And the devil's going to get a stronghold on you. Amen. You know, two clean sheets can't dirty one another. I told y'all that. <laughs> well, y'all both going to hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, two clean sheets. Yeah, okay. All right. You go on and tell that one to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. But today I want to share with you that the second key is very important. We have to stay or continue in God's word. Or we won't be able to walk us right before God. We'll be all bent out of shape just like that woman that Jesus healed. Amen. Now, if believing lies causes us to be bound, right? We know that, right? Then what does the truth do? Right. Jesus said the truth will set us free. Yes. Ain't that right? Amen. Amen. He said unto those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, you my disciples indeed, you'll know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The word disciple comes from a Latin word, disciples, okay, which means student. The word disciple means student. If you're not a student of the word, Jesus is saying you're not my disciple. No. Isn't that simple? Mm -hmm. It's derived from the root word desir, which means to learn. So he said you got to be a student and you have to learn to be my disciple. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're not learning and you're not a student of the word, you don't have to convince me. Jesus is going to tell you in judgment, depart from me. I never knew you. You work of iniquity. I never had a relationship with you. Why? Because I'm the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. You see what I'm saying? He said, if you want to get to know me, get in this Word. 
Because yeah. here I am right here. You want to know the mind of Christ? Get in this word. If you want to stop leaning to your own understanding, get in this word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, Jesus said you must be a student of the word in order to be his disciple. Disciples are those who continue in, take heed to, make a priority of God's word. And if that's not true in your life, amen, then you are not Jesus Christ's disciple. And it doesn't matter what you think. It don't matter how you feel. <laughs> don't matter how we see it. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is what God says. Amen. And a whole lot of people are going to find that out. But it's going to be too late. Because they're going to be in judgment. Amen. In 2 Timothy 2 and 15, he told us all through the Bible. 2 Timothy 2 and 15, he said, study to show yourself approved unto God. Not me. He yeah. said, don't study to get a degree. Right. I don't need you to get a bachelor's, a PA. I don't need you to get nothing. I need you to study my word mm -hmm. to show yourself approved unto me. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he said, I need you to A workman that need not be made ashamed that can rightly Divide the word of truth. See, if we don't study the word, we can't rightly divide it. So what we ourselves will be false teachers. We'll be telling people stuff that's wrong. Right. Then they're going to go tell, well, so-and-so told me that if I just do this, then what? Now you lead people astray. So we need to know the truth. It'll set us free. Second Peter 3 and 18, I'm getting ready to close. 3 and 18, because we don't have to continue. That's why this is a series. There's too much in it for me to rush it. Okay? But 2 Peter 3 and 18, he said, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen? That makes sense? Amen. So, the key... First key to spiritual victory is what? Stop believing lies. Stop believing lies. The second key. Stay the Amen. That's what we're Talk back to Amen. So we got that part. We're going to finish up this second key next week. And we're going to get into the third key. Very important. Amen. 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 I pray that you've been blessed. You're going to give the Lord a hand praise. I'm going to hear you right there. You can't tell it all in one day. I don't want to get you where you start skirmishing and looking at each other. I got good stuff. Man, I'm I got what's good. So what? I know some of you, if you're like me, you haven't eaten and you know, you're pretty cranky when you don't eat. Amen. <laughs> so I want to thank God for each and every one of you. I'm going to just speak to those watching online and ask you if you want to be saved by the blood of Jesus. According to the word of God in Romans 10, 9 and 10, he said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So if you repeat after me the simple prayer, Father God, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. And I believe on the third day you raised him from the dead. I believe according to the Holy Scripture that if I die believing in you in my heart, Lord Jesus, that on the last day you'll raise me from the dead. Lord Jesus, I invite you to my heart. Holy Spirit, I give you control of my life. And I ask you to save my soul. In Jesus' name. If you said that simple prayer, find your good Bible teaching church. Go to our website, thesolidrockindchurch.org. And we have a number, we have an email that you can contact us. We'll be glad to help you. New walk, Jesus. God bless you.